Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney Magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guests, Reese Holland and John Hoffman to the show. Welcome, you two. Hey, hey Tammy. <laughs> you should be very, very excited. <laughs> really, really, Tammy. It's, it, it's the honor of your life, frankly. No, it's, you're the best. Oh, you, you guys are so sweet. I think the last time we talked was maybe four years, all three of us on the same call. Ah, so this is our God. third conversation together, and you guys have not gotten rid of me yet. So <laughs> We keep, we keep trying. <laughs> Well, I, a lot of people know you guys from Adventures in Wonderland, and our listeners also know John because we had you, John, on the show to discuss the first Disney oh. Channel film, Northern Lights. So right. I'm so glad to have you back on the show. So welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm happy to be back. And our main focus today is Adventures in Wonderland, which was a Disney Channel show as well, but it played in the early 90s, and it was filmed at Hollywood Studios, a.k.a. MGM Studios in Florida before it relocated to California and if you guys could you know introduce a little bit more about your characters you know who were they and what part did they play in the show I yes I think I I would mainly be called if, if there was the 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 queen who was basically running all of Wonderland I was the host of most of the parties that uh, uh, sort of like gathered people or people would j- tend to gather around uh, the Hatter's house and the Hatter's table and uh, sort of, um, wreak you know. Havoc. Wreak, wreak, <laughs> wreak sweet havoc with the hair. My, uh, my roommate, or not a roommate actually, but you would have thought because we were never not together and it was the greatest partnership uh, in acting history, frankly, outside of maybe <laughs> Lucy and Ethel. That's what I would call it. No, it was truly like an amazing partnership. But anyway, yes, that was the Hatter. He was an inventor of many, many ridiculous things. He uh, was also, um, you know, chief helper turn mayhem uh, in chief. And the hair would usually help both ends of screwing it up and fixing it. And a lot of the hair's character was based on a lot of things that Barney Five did. Isn't that interesting? That is like, in my mind too, we... We both approached these characters for this piece, and the writing supported it in a big way, but just classic comedy pairings that I always thought of, like I would go to sort of like, yeah, Lucy um, or Carol Burnett or whomever, some of the great, I always went big in my head on like the kinds of comedy because it was so physical, it was so verbal, but you had to be so fast and facile, and then you had to be constantly relying on the other half to be right there and the, and and so the sort of like balance of, of partnership was always 50-50 in my mind and, and it never felt like we could breathe and do the same stuff we knew where each other was going all the time it got into a very easy rhythm so that's kind of it's interesting to hear that because I think of Don Knotts in that character that's one of the great side yeah, side Don partner Knotts. characters ever ever yeah. When the show first started, I mean, working with John was was fantastic. We were so lucky that we hit it off. And, oh my god! Yeah, because if we didn't like each other, it would have been, it, it would have been a nightmare. Um, but when yeah. the show first started, it really was written. It was the Red Queen, the White Rabbit, and the Mad Hatter, and everybody else was kind of like a little, a little. I had a line or two every week. I didn't do anything. So I, at the beginning, I don't think anybody really knew who the hair was. And I, I, I actually went to the producers and I said, you know, 
you guys, this is a really, I think the hair is very funny. And uh, you're not writing for him, and it's very frustrating to me. So they actually started writing things for the hair. And I think after about, like, 30 episodes where I did almost nothing, um, they started writing for me. And yeah. that's I think that's when you started getting to know who the hair was. And I think, I think the Hatter and Hare's relationship got better because yeah. you knew more of – it wasn't just all about one person. And John could certainly carry all that oh. off, but people would make jokes like, "Hey, Reese, what's your what's your line this week?" <laughs> you know, and it's like uh, yeah. that got really old. It was very frustrating. <laughs> it was very frustrating for me too because uh, it's just what happened, you know. And I, I, you know, being on the other side of it now, writing for television, I I'm always trying to constantly make myself aware: what are we repeating? What are we doing? You know, uh, that we can subvert and make. You know, let's let's go into the area where we haven't gone because there's a lot of things to mine here that if we get ourselves into a rut of the same thing over and over again, it's just everyone's going to feel it. But in my case, as an actor on the show, I knew Reese was like hugely talented. It had nothing to do with that. It's all just sometimes that rut that the writers can get into and they don't yeah, sometimes so, see it. So it was brilliant exactly that you it. said that. But yeah, yeah and that's you exactly also, what it is. It, it, just, everybody, it was very comfortable to write for the header. <laughs> Yeah, you were very funny, and it was easy. But oh, so much easier they when they wrote for you. That's well, the they, thing. they wrote for both of us, and that's yeah. when the show really took off for me. I, I thought uh, it got so much better. Couldn't agree more. That was heaven. Nothing more fun than to react to an active character sitting next to you, and and the balance of that makes it so much easier. You can be active, but then reactive to something wonderful. And coming out of Reese, it was always like. You always found this sort of, you found, making a hundred episodes of something, you, you really, it, it, it <clears throat> gave you this luxurious, like, time to, like, find motifs for your, you know, character and your relationships to each other. So you would have these, how true that is, that all of a sudden became, like, a little thing. But more importantly, between, like, I think of, of the hair and, and Reese playing the hair as sort of, like, I always knew when he was going to come in with sort of a snide, uh, you know, counterpoint to whatever's just been said. And he would just, with a very low key, subtle sort of like, but I'm bump underneath it, right? You know, well, I don't know about. And it, the rhythm would always be the same, but like you knew how to write for, for it once the actor, in a way, led you into it. And that's what I think they did with Reese very, very well after he uh, gave them the heads up, which was very smart because. Well, and I, I also think I also think they started writing for everybody else as well. I mean, the the tweedles yeah. really never did much other than like a really cool dance number every week. It's like, yeah, God, these guys are so funny, and they're yeah, so that's... talented. Like, let them yeah. go, and it's, and they they did, they did. I think there's a lot of power to the fact that they played more with the pairings, but then when you guys all came together in those scenes, it just makes the show, because I had told everybody else, I think at the beginning, like a couple months ago, I had not seen all the episodes, and somebody so graciously put majority of them up on YouTube for a lot of people to watch, so I literally started from the beginning, because I really wanted to see, because I hadn't seen everything, you know, I probably saw about 30, 40 episodes of the 100, so I started from the beginning, and you can definitely see a change between the dynamics, between the pairings first. You know, they use the pairings to their advantage, but oh, then yeah. you have these group scenes. And that's what ends the, the, the last show. The last show is all of you around a campfire, which we'll get to in a second. But I'm so glad you bring that up because it's like this work in progress. You really have to get the groove going and understand, like, how, where this will go because you can't really foresee yeah. it. That's very. It was very stilted at the beginning, is how I remember it too. We were all sort of it finding was. our way. And, I was and scared. <laughs> everybody, I think, yeah. felt that way on some level. You just yeah. never knew because it, Disney is very, as you know, Tammy. Disney is very strong in their brand, obviously, but also so putting out there a new Alice in Wonderland, um, and and with with a, a new approach on all of these characters. They're, they were very intense about the specifics from casting across the board to every prop on set. They just, the look and feel had to be of one piece and, and they, and so we all kind of were finding our way. And I think we also felt the responsibility to be, you know, a, a, 
a teaching tool for young people. So that was not necessarily a place where you could feel totally comfortable in stretching and being a little more out there. And But that that was the beginning. And I watch them now and I, I can always tell, you know, I can usually tell because of Elizabeth and how young she is or old she is. But right. I, I look at the shows now and I, I crave the ones from anywhere from 35 on. <laughs> yeah, you're um, right. Yeah. They were just so much better. They were so much better. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And because we were also in those first 35 in Florida in that fishbowl where the tours were coming by looking at us. You, 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 because I remember last time we were talking, you said you guys were shooting close to where Roseanne was shooting at the time. Ridiculous. We were the most, like, it, it, what, what are we doing here? But in a way, because it was like the golden age of comedy in the last 25 years, really, with, yeah. with Seinfeld and Roseanne. And I, al- I think I also want to say, I think Will and Grace came in after us, but uh, that lot held such, yes, Roseanne was pretty much almost next door, I think. Yeah. And there were a lot of celebrities walking around, too. You know, this was, this was like the golden age of Hollywood Studios, MGM Studios, you know. Aud- Audrey Hepburn was walking around, Betty White, the Golden Girls, uh, Bette Midler was filming, of course. What was one of your most memorable encounters at the studios, not counting the guest stars on the show? Oh, wow. I love that. I, I love your, it, it, Tammy, what a historian. You know all of this. Okay, I actually don't, I mean, I loved that whole experience so much. I loved it for the people that I was with. But things like that, like going around this, it became our workplace so much that didn't I didn't connect so much. The one thing I do remember specifically was being completely dazzled by that first, I believe it was the theater that they were showing this Muppet movie in. That was made specifically for MGM Studios. I, I, I never saw anybody. Yeah. I do remember one time <laughs> that I had I had somebody I had a had a dog a little dog here at my house, and um, I had this elderly woman, Elisa. I just showed yeah. you a painting I done of her. Was coming over like every day, and she would uh, take Fred out and whatever. I get oh. a call one day that she had taken the dog out. Somebody broke into my house and stole her purse, and she was hysterical, and the police were here. And so I came running over here in my full makeup, and I'm walking in, and these police are looking at me, and I'm like, this is <laughs> it was just like, I, and I, I'm, I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry, I do, a, I do a children's TV show. I'm sorry. You know, trying to console Elisa. <laughs> I was just that is everything, Tammy. That is like the uh, part of the experience of doing this show. Everybody having to be serious at times while in that makeup or while with ears like half on, like a really serious conversation about things, and you completely lose the fact and only until someone else comes from outside into into our little bubble of a world, because they're looking at someone with like a Q tip up their nose so they could breathe. And there were a ton of guest stars, I have to add. Is there any one in particular that really stood out to you? Uh, I, one of my, we, we are, we, by the end of this show, we were so in tune with all of this. And I think they had a budget. They had a lot of money left. So they started bringing in a lot of people. But I remember, John, you will probably remember this as well. Judge Reinhold came in and he was like a doctor. I remember. I don't remember exactly what he was, but he was a doctor in this scene, and he hadn't rehearsed with us. But I guess he knew what he was doing. So we were coming in to do like a run through right before we shot the scene, and it's with the Hatter and the Hair, and we are being the Hatter and the Hair craziness, and he is looking at us like, "What have I gotten myself into? What is that?" I remember the look on his face of like, "Oh my God, what." Yeah. Hello. Help somebody, please. Anybody yeah. help us? He was a lovely, subtle actor. And Very subtle. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. He did yeah. not know what he was walking into. That was amazing to watch him sort of like yeah. try and lift up the energy. But it's awkward for an actor who's always been told, you know, bring it down, bring it down. Um, yeah. And here we were screaming in his face. I do remember that. That. Oh my god. Yeah. No, and there, it, it's interesting. Everybody sort of found their way. The people who came on knowing the show, like Willie Nelson came on because I think his kids and Ed McMahon also uh, 
his grandkids watch the show. By that time, it was really sweet because then the show was established enough that mm-hmm. people coming on had a connection to it and could recognize it. Um, Marley Matlin came on. She was Marley my, Matt, exactly. my deaf, what, is, what was her name? April mm-hmm. Hare. That's or, it. Something, yeah, April Hare, June. I played June Hare, my mother. <laughs> you had to deal with bullying back before even bullying was as, was as notable. Godfrey problem as it is i think it's that was a of, great episode you know i think we've said it before for me it's just one of the great it, it's one of the great experiences of my life working with this group working this because that's the thing when i look back and i see you know the show is geared for the age that it's geared for and um everything else but the undeniable thing the thing that's startling i think when anyone looks at it is without even realizing it maybe, is the level of professional talent just in that group. I feel like well, that's what you see across the board in the show. And we were all, we we're basically all theater people. Yeah. So, you know, when you're, when you're thinking every single week, we did, we shot two episodes, which is eight dance numbers a week. Uh, yeah. So it was a lot going on. And I, don't, I think if you would they just hired somebody who had only done TV. Uh, it would have been really difficult to to learn all the stuff. I mean, my, my my favorite memories from this show are all of the hysterical numbers we got to do. Mm. The songs, Billy Moomy, um, who yeah. was Bill Robinson from The Little Boy from Lost in Space, basically wrote all of the Hatter and Hare songs. Mm-hmm. And I, I, just the other day, I was thinking about... Um, Swing time. One of my favorite numbers. Oh, we did I love all about, that one. All about awesome. golfing. And it, was, it was so funny. You know, I have to tell a quick story. I worked uh, uh, on a show on HBO a couple of years ago called Looking. And um, the lead guy on that is Jonathan Groff. Uh, and he is a great musical theater actor. He's been nominated for two Tony Awards. And he was just in Hamilton this year as the king. Um, yeah. But I was working with him on looking and we hit it off and we got to know each other very well and had a great time and, and talk theater or whatever. And about five months into it, I was talking to him and he, uh, someone else was talking to me and I said, oh, that's, it was, I, I did a children's television show for the Disney channel many, many years ago. Uh, and Jonathan, I don't know why, but five months had gone by, we hadn't ever talked about that. And I continued telling him, and I was, oh, well, I played the Mad Hatter. And Jonathan grabbed my arm and like his jaw hit the floor. He stepped back and he was like, what? What? And he had no <laughs> idea that it, that, and he was like, Hoffman, I was obsessed with that show. Every morning, me and my mom watching that show before going to school, coming home from school. I was obsessed because people were singing. People were doing so in those ways, I do find it's it, nothing sweeter, obviously, to feel like, oh, great. If I helped open up the door to someone like him thinking like you could be out there singing, not that there's any real huge responsibility, but I love that it's possible. I feel like I've recognized that more and more uh, lately, oddly, when I tell people I'm doing it. I'm working on a thing right now for Netflix called Grace and Frankie, and the crew... <clears throat> And the staff, their assistants at work, once that came out, there's the casting director. It's, it's become a whole thing at work. I'm implanted like Gilligan was for me. <laughs> and they can't get their heads wrapped around it. Like I've had, I'm in my office and I'm working and someone ca- came by recently, Dan, who works with our uh, production uh, producer. And he came and he popped his head and he said, can I just interrupt one second? I just found out you were the Mad Hatter? And like, he's a nervous wreck now to even be around me. I'm like, Dan, it's fine. And he's like, no, I can't get my head around it. It's the sweetest thing to, to like have that come back. But it's, um, it's again, part of the, I don't think anyone would be thinking to look for me as that, but it's also the thing with the anonymity of it. You have to tell people that you were this thing and then they have this whole moment of like trying to find it while looking at you now. <laughs> Um, I was just thinking this when listening Reese to your voice. Reese has the most exquisite voice. That's the other thing. You, 
like when I was talking about the talent of the people involved, it's like to know Reese, you know, Reese was playing these romantic leads in the hugest musicals ever in Les Miserables and Phantom before doing the March Hare. Um, and, and, but I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, your voice and I'm thinking of Armelia who was in a revival of Agnes Behaven, you know, I want to say six or six or seven years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I saw Ken Page in St. Louis and he's doing theater there brilliantly all the time. He looks and sounds great as ever. Patrick Richwood is constantly doing theater all over the country. Um, and and I, I, there is a part of me like, oh, I would be interested in like some get together of everybody. Elizabeth Harnoy's, I mean, please, uh, is gorgeous and still working every minute, I feel like. Uh, you know, I, 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 and Robert, Barry Fleming and Harry Waters, everybody I think is still involved. Robert is, Robert is now like in one of the people in charge at the arena stage in Washington. Um, and I know Harry, I think is teaching, uh, somewhere. I, it's, it's really interesting. Everybody's still very, very much still vital and alive and kicking. And, and I would be interested to see actually what it would be like to get us all together to see creatively what you know, even if it's a concert of some of the songs or something like that, or just to reminisce in some way, there's something interesting to me about where everybody is now and, um, you know, what, what could be done that way too. Cause it's, it's such a talented group. As I said, it's, it's extraordinary. I'll tell you what's, what's, what was interesting. I came into this show. I have a degree in music education. I had taught school. I mean, it's like, so teaching and music is, has been a huge, huge part of my life. And so something like with the music was very easy for me. It was it just was a very easy thing to do. What I learned so much from John in this series, I'm, I'm a Virgo. I, everything to me is very <laughs> organized and very planned. And let's not stray and let's not do anything wacky crazy. Let's just know what we're doing and let's just do that. And John is like, you know, we're, we're rehearsing these scenes. It's like, well, we should do this. It's wrong. You know, I'm all like, ah, ah. And it's like all these <laughs> things. And I'm like, what? no, no, let's, let's just do this. <laughs> and John's all these ideas and these wacky things. You freed me up so much from myself. Mm, that's uh, nice. Yeah. Over the, that's, that was one of the biggest things I got out of this. Just being able to know it's okay to be, wacky crazy and to swipe my hand over that table and throw all those cups on the floor. It's like something <laughs> I could never, I could never have done that. The first time you did that, I literally, it was in the pilot. You came through like running down that table, kicking things everywhere. I'm going, Oh my Lord. Oh my, are, are you going to break these? Are these going to break? What? Why are you? Don't do that. <laughs> so, the prop people crazy. were thrilled with me, but it was it was very sweet to see. And it, again, it it provided so much of our both our off stage and on stage dynamic and comedy because Reese's Virgo does he leads with his Virgo, and oh. and but in such a sweet and funny way that I I almost I think we fed each other because that almost pushed me to uh, do things more because I knew it would be <laughs> upsetting to him. <laughs> and, and, and delighted me more than that and and so it was a good yin and yang now i hope you don't mind i love to segue to wonderland and see if we can talk to the mad hatter and the march hare for just three questions so first of all thank you so much march hare and thank you so much mad hatter for being here today i cannot I, I'm I'm just in awe of both of you. So thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Well, Tammy, it's a Sunday, and we're usually having a day uh -huh. off. But but I I actually am thrilled to be talking to anyone who's not <laughs> just the hair. So oh, uh, fine, fine, Hatter. I'm gonna go but, back to my hole. <laughs> listen, go back to your hole, hair, and 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 let me just ask Tammy, what mirror did you come through? To find it. Oh, well, I, w I came through the magic mirror. Somehow I found the Evil Queen's magic mirror, and 
here I am. And I'm so glad because I've never seen this place in person. You know, it's I've always watched you guys through a mirror, basically a mirror like TV. <laughs> Good. So, but I'm going to need to talk to Wonderland Security about all of this because <laughs> I feel I like there's been them. a terrible breach. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with it. You guys make the best type of things in Wonderland, whether it be, you know, a cake or some pretzels or come up with all these new inventions. So what is the latest and greatest invention that you have worked on? I invented Skype. And I don't get the credit that I think I deserve. No, uh, you don't. You don't. I, don't, I, I don't know how to work it, but I did invent it. And you're both such, and you're both such talented dancers and performers. You know, where did you take your lessons? Did you take ballet or tap first? And and which of the two do you think is the best out of uh, both of you for best dancer? Well, you know, uh, I've studied with the greatest people in the world. Uh, you know, I can do it. All. I can do it all, Tammy. I can do it all. I'm actually yeah. standing at the bar right now, just. Uh-huh. Working, having a drink. Stretching out the quad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Wrong kind of bar, Heather. Well, the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I keep trying to talk to you about that. You won't listen. I, I, I get deeply confused problem. about ballet experience. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't. I, I, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, and my final question for both of you, again, thank you for your time, but, um, you know, if the Red Queen were out of town for some reason, for one day, and you both could be a queen for a day, what would be your first decree? Well, <laughs> that's a loaded that, question. Sir. That's a very big question. <laughs> I think, like, I think first, go ahead. No, no, I, 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 it, it, I've had some people say that there's too many queens in Wonderland when they see the show. However, <laughs> um, <laughs> here, do you have a thought? I, I feel like I cut you off. <laughs> no, I wouldn't decree anything. I would decree that they put the show back on the air again is what I would decree. Oh, I like that. that. Decree a DVD. Yeah, I think that's the best idea I've heard all day. Yeah, I, I would decree that. I would decree um, four or five extra tea times throughout the day. That was perfect, by the way. Huh. And before we end our interview, I always ask each Tierra talk show guest three Disney-themed questions. So we'll start with the Donald one, which is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites to see in the movie theater? Yeah, I remember my first Disney film in the in the theaters was Mary Poppins. Mine was um, bed, bed knobs and broomsticks. I remember. Oh wow! Because I'm so much older than you. <laughs> and our goofy question: Besides the characters of Wonderland, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Well, I can Ooh. see you being best friends with Goofy. I know. That's where I went, too. Yeah, that, that is where I went. There's something, you know why? I don't know what. I feel like he needs a little, he needs a little, uh, uh, it, it, there's something a little too sad about Goofy. I want Goofy a little uh, happier and more lively. Reese, uh, let me see. Um, I don't know. I feel like the March Hare running around with Chip and Tail. After you. No, after you. <laughs> Now after you guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. Exactly. And our Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? Uh, when, when you wish upon a star, when you wish upon a star. It's the first one that comes first to mind. Thing, either that or E-N-C-Y-C-L-O-P-E-D-I-A. That's how I learned how to spell encyclopedia. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I, oh, you know what else is also in my mind when you said that? Uh, when you wish upon a star, just immediately comes up because that's the greatest thing ever. Uh, but then the bare necessities also came up because I love, mm. I love the Jungle Book movie, and I was amazed they did a really good job with integrating that great music at times. I love that movie too. I just can't thank you both enough for coming on the show again, <laughs> the newer version of the show, um, and. Uh, the best of luck to both of you on on your new endeavors, whatever whatever you reach for. And I really hope that we do get to see a reunion sometime soon. I'm glad we could do a little reunion now. That I really really appreciate it. And thank you both. Thank you, thank Terry. You. Thank you so much. It's the, it's the greatest thing to be able to get back into this head and 
and to connect with Reese. Reese, we have to do something. We're going to do something. We have to get together. Definitely. But same here, Tammy. You really, I, I can't thank you enough. It's so sweet that you guys and your interest in this and, and everything continues. It's It means the world to everyone who cared about that. So I really appreciate it and all that you're doing. Nine. You know, folks, it's springtime.